Michelangelo did not stop at painting and sculpture. Of course, he's going to try his hand at architecture, which brings us to the new St. Peter's, where he plays a pretty darn substantial role. Now, the new St. Peter's is a replacement to the church that Constantine had commissioned in about 326, which was in considerable disrepair. Of course, it's 1,200 years old, give or take, at this point. And it would have looked something like this, where you have the large cruciform church, a large courtyard in front of it. Now, we don't tend to think of courtyards today as a major element of churches, but we do tend to see them in ancient church construction in the early church. And what we see is Julius II, again, we're back to Julius, who wants the structure to rival the seat of the Caesars. He wants Rome to be rebuilt with himself at the top. This idea of a Christian Rome, the Roman Catholic Church, this whole idea connecting themselves to the now long gone empire. So we get Bramante involved. Donato Bramante originally designed the structure in 1505. And his version, we're looking at a floor plan. So anything that's black is a wall or column. Uh, anything that's a circle is a dome. And what we see is a series of domes built throughout. There are actually nine crosses that we see here. Those crosses are there symbolically. After all, the Christ, uh, Christ dies on the cross, etc. And we see a series of five domes that would have been there to open up the space. Domes are key to religious spaces. Architecturally speaking, a dome really will be used generally for a religious space or today for a sports arena. But for the same reason, both require that they hold a massive amount of people in a large open area where you can see and hear what's going on. So we see them in both places. We also see a great deal of symmetry. Now, during Bramante's lifetime, construction only advanced to the foundation, as well as some of the piers. In 1546, construction will pass to Michelangelo. Now, he had been harassing Julius for a long time. He finally gets the job. And while he appreciated Bramante's plan, he modifies it for structural and, well, political reasons. When I say political, I mean speed. By the time Michelangelo is really getting started, Paul III is going to be Pope, and Paul III wants his church. So let's look at Michelangelo's plan. Now, he developed the project into one of massive architecture. The dome he designed was the same shape as Brunelleschi's in Florence. He's going to t borrow that and bring it down to Rome. Later, that dome will be executed by Giacomo della Porta, and he's going to do it based on Michelangelo's designs, and he's going to try and keep it as close as possible, not saying that there haven't been changes made along the way. The result is a dome that rises from its base, something that rests firmly upon this base. So. The idea is it's supposed to be a dome that gives you the sense of floating. All those windows underneath give this illusion that the dome is actually floating above you if you're inside. This is going to be particularly important. And we can see that Bramante's plan, the use of other domes, is going to play in as well. As well as Michelangelo's plan, which is a little bit quicker, albeit a little bit heavier. Now we're going to come back to St. Peter's again when we get to the Baroque because there's a lot of things going on. They're still going to need to build the facade. They're going to increase the nave. We still need to build the piazza. So we're definitely not done with the new St. Peter's.